So sometimes I think people get spoken word probably just um they probably think it's just like poetry or just um poetry or just uh you know people getting on stage doing their thing but what i've come to realize spoken word comes in many form shapes and fashions um just as far as how you speak to people like whether it's through a, your books that you write people read your books you speak to them whether it's through the art that you make however you paint a picture um certain things speak without speaking to people um you can things speak visually um things speak like i say of course you hear them but um on bonded with boogie with a person's perspective we are here to I guess express that, that you could speak to people in many ways, in many different versions of spoken word, whether it is word, worded or not worded. And we are here today, another episode, with your boy per usual, Boogie Ogun, a.k.a. him, okay. a.k.a. him a thee, mm-hmm. him for knee, mm-hmm. him the G, okay. him who doesn't hide, him who seeks, him with the shortest arms, him still with the longest reach. And we got my boy. Precious. With a precious perspective. And we back. And I won't say per usual, but we are blessed today with a very special guest. Uh, The first of its kind or her kind, excuse me, on the podcast being a published author. And so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and let Monique introduce herself and Tell you tell the people where they can find you, get the book, all that different type of stuff. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Monique. Um, my book is Nowhere to Call Home, which you can find um, on Amazon. Um, I also have a children's book called uh, Camille and Juliet's Healing Relationship, and that's also on Amazon. Okay. Can we get nice. a little... Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the we children's gotta, yeah. book is over there. Yeah, yeah, children's book. This is Camille and Juliet's healing relationship, and it's just basically about. Um, since I love horses, and I have two of my own. Um, you have two horses. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, well, continue. <laughs> <laughs> um, how the horse helps her get through her day and helps her heal. <sighs> so it's just about Camille's day with the horse. <laughs> 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 oh man <laughs> yeah okay um i like that so with that being said do you have an instagram or any social media where the people can reach out to you uh yes my instagram is monqua33 m-o-n-q-u-a-3-3 and um on facebook it's monique faults okay well thank you for the introduction thank you thanks and so with that um getting right into it uh you just mentioned something about uh with camille and that idea of healing, you know what I'm saying, with the horse and that journey. How do you think a lot of times writing in general, like, aids in some form of healing process or kind of like getting better? Um, I think it's a form of getting an, getting it out. Um, in our culture, I noticed that we don't write a lot about how we feel. I think a lot of people just started writing about how they feel. I think um, therapy was um, frowned upon. <laughs> so a lot of people um, did not go to therapy, and I, and I didn't either. So um, for a lot of years, I had a lot of uh, built up anger. I wouldn't deal with, I, I didn't know how to deal with my kids, my life, work. Um, I was just a walking time bomb. Um, relationships were just, I was looking for something that just wasn't there. So I had to just basically start writing and letting out all of my pain so that I could heal and be better for somebody else and my kids. So you're using it as an outlet? Yes. That's what's up. And it's crazy that you say that because I feel like a lot of times it's not so much that therapy is frowned upon more so than like we don't have the access and or resources to like educate us on it as well as I think that in our culture therapy looks different so like you said for you therapy is writing for us therapy is spoken word and you know what I'm saying different forms of art and we be in denial about even needing therapy you know what I'm saying like like (laughs) You know, we we went through therapy at a point in time. Sure, yeah. And um, I felt like when we were younger, we felt as if, 
I don't need this. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Like I'm not, Facts. I'm not crazy. I don't, and you th- and you think that's the only time people go to therapy right. when they're crazy or right. when they. So now that I'm older, um, it, like I said, even if you don't, I feel like we all have people that we can call and. Like basically give them our all, especially I could talk like you know my, me and my brother. I could talk to him about anything. Not saying he's a professional therapist, nice. but as far as like for me, I know that I'm talking to somebody who will basically. I feel like have most therapists do they tell you the truth about oh, that part. about yourself? It's and, hard to find a good yeah. Therapist. People don't really like to hear the truth about themselves. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so. Like I said, I, I appreciate people going to therapy and supporting therapy therapy more now because, like I say, we went through therapy at a point in time when I was young. I just felt like, like I say, it was a denial thing. Like th- now, I actually look for people to talk to yeah. when I'm going through certain things, or I just need to, um, just like I say, just tell you my issues, and I just want to hear you respond. Whether it's whether you telling me whether you a yes man or whether you actually telling me like. Like the, the wrong from right, like I say. So, black people go to therapy <laughs> if you, like I say, if you feel like you need it. But then again, like I say, people but feel even like if they you don't, don't need, need it. Yeah. I feel like it's a good way to just talk about your day because then you're gonna figure out that you actually need it for sure. Thanks. And so, what? How did writing become that for you? Like, how did? When did you? When did you first sit down and say, you know what? I got all these <clears throat> thoughts, ideas, whatever. They're going to come out in books. And they're two, from what I'm seeing, two different types of books. You have the children's book and the, no, what is it called? Nowhere to Call, to home. call home. It seems more of a like, <laughs> I don't want to say a coming to story, but more so of a like a, a adult. Is it fiction? Or what? Do you have a genre for it? Uh, it's nonfiction. Okay, facts. But so. it's based off my life. But I just try to... Um, put it in in another perspective because I feel like when people read memoirs and biographies they get kind of bored. Mm-hmm. They, I don't want they don't want to read about your life, but when you put it into somebody else's life, it makes it a Facts. little bit more interesting. Facts. So I feel like people be thirsty to read about somebody else's life. Maybe oh. that's just me, <laughs> but I, but I think like which and you can intervene, correct me at any time. I think that in a space of storytelling, sometimes you want to kind of have that sense of escapism. Right. So it's like, it's cool to read somebody day to day, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. but as a character in a book, you can spice things up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Tate you can kind of, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm Tate saying? and uh, that's what, what, what was <laughs> best man. Best man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's a thing where you have that creative freedom. So again, right. like going back to my initial question, like how did writing become that outlet for you? Um. So are you asking at what point after I started writing? Did I I started to release? Yeah, or like that when was probably did, like ten years ago. Okay. For sure. Well, like that I think that's what he was asking. Like, when did writing? When did you know writing was your way of, you know, getting expression. everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Expression. it was just like ten years ago. I and I've been talking about this book for ten years, and everybody's just like, oh, okay, whatever. And I even had a guy that was like, I was dating, and he was like, everybody been through something, and yo, your book ain't nothing special, your life ain't nothing yeah, special. You don't need people like that in your life. <laughs> yeah. You not need That's, people like that in your life. Yeah, he was like, every, a couple men that I dated was like, oh, I've been through this, I've been through that, like, so what type of thing. Write so, a book, my boy. Right, that's what I was saying. <laughs> so when I put the book out, I wasn't expecting nothing. I'm like, oh, okay, you know, whatever, it ain't nothing. But at least I put what I wanted to put yeah. out there. And then when it took off, then they all came back to me like, I always believed in you. And uh, I, I believe like, in yeah, you. Yeah, that's okay. He's talking about I believe in you. <laughs> Facts. That's crazy though. Yeah. yeah, you don't need those type of people around you. Yeah. Everybody yeah. at first. But now we all went through something. Yeah. Not yeah. like even if we all went through something, I'm not gonna tell you that to stop you from writing your book or oh, to yeah. make you think that you should. That's crazy. I really didn't have a lot of support because maybe because I talked about it for so long and people were tired of hearing about it, but they didn't really support me Facts. at first. You know, That's action. Yes. You know, uh, you know, action. You know, people will only listen to you for so long yeah. with no action involved, right? Like she ain't finna put this book out. She ain't saying nothing. So, yeah. so what? What kicked it in the gear though? Like, what made you finally like uh, take those steps to do it? 
my two oldest kids graduated and then um I had my last two left. I felt like my career was where I wanted to be. I had everything in line with my book and I'm like, it's my time. It's just just it's time to put everything out there. And I just start just throwing everything out there, everything that I had and then everything took off so fast, it just like smacked me in the face. So I was I had to slow down. <laughs> like, whoa, what happened? That's I didn't precise. think I would get this much of a support. Uh, I'm getting it right now. Uh, I think a lot of that comes from like uh, kind of just walking in your truth and right. walking in like your destiny, so to speak, knowing that even in a space where people may doubt, not see whatever vision it is that you already see, mm -hmm. you being so, uh, I guess, determined in your faith to take the, the, the road less traveled, so to speak, and say, hey, everybody do got a story mm -hmm. but everybody's not willing to put their story on the pages right. everybody's not willing to share their story and their testimony in order for somebody else to be inspired so i asked do you think that did that have anything to do with you publishing in regards to hey how can my story help the next person or was that it just is. like i gotta okay yeah because um actually it's, it's helping a lot um i have like 50 men in my inbox. My my audience is men who mm. all the trauma that they've been through, which is amazing. Man, you know niggas be finessing. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> they, they, have, they don't want to have nothing to do with me. Trust me. Yeah, they, they don't know that until they know that, though. They, <laughs> they, 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 they going to they try. <laughs> I know a lot of secrets that I shouldn't know. So oh, I was yeah. like, oh, my God. But um, I didn't expect... Oh, you had niggas confessing stuff in your inbox? Oh, yeah. He's like, Asha. <laughs> okay. I don't yeah. know if I want to read it now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to read oh, it now. Oh, yeah, they confessing. Everybody, they telling me everything that they've been through, and they, they're they they so happy that they're able to get it off their chest and stuff that they haven't talked about so how does for that, years. How does that make you feel when, like, um, I think we had this discussion before. Um, Like, uh, I do poetry. Um, He does poetry. But, um, like I say... I was telling somebody just recently, like, um, if I if I was getting paid, I'd feel good. But a payment to me is like when I get off stage and people walk up on me, like, "Yo, bro," you know what I'm saying? Like, like I say, the spoken word we discussed earlier, just you speaking and somebody feeling like what you speaking. So, like I said, how does it make you feel that you got them people in your inbox and people like coming to you, like, "Yo, your book helps me or I can relate or like does that like I say with does that make you how does that make you feel great, great. <laughs> all that writing wasn't in vain these books putting these books out are stressful Facts. it's not easy for Facts. sure oh, everybody think it's easy and everybody comes to me like I want to write a book and I'm like it's not what you think you got to invest in yourself mm -hmm. first so it ain't like you could just put it out for free all the editors and the illustrators and everything else it's just yeah. it's a lot so it's stressful putting the book out itself after you put it on paper. So over a course, um, you got the two books. When did when did they come out? Um, Nowhere to Call Home came out in January. And then the children's book, I think, came out in June or July. June like July. early July. Which was the most challenging to? Um, The first one. The first one. I, yeah. I can see that. Yeah. It probably ain't. I would. I, let, let me not say it's probably not that hard to write a children's book because I've never wrote one. But I can. I. I. It's probably a bit easier to write a children's book. You know. Well, what it's I'm the illustrations with the children's book that's Facts. complicated. Facts. Okay. Um, you can just throw the rhymes down or whatever you got to say. What message? Because I'm trying to do a um a trilogy, but for foster kids and adoptive kids of mm. everything that they go through uh, when they're in a the foster home. So you were a foster kid, were you? Yeah. Okay, see, boom. I just asked that because, you know, when people do certain things for certain people, you'd be like, what yeah. made you just write it for the foster kids? Oh, for the yeah. Okay, I don't, we, we're not going to get into that. But that's dope <laughs> that you're, you know, trying to uh, get a book for something that you, or write a book or illustrate a book that's for something that you've been through and something that you, you want kids to see that's going through the same struggle. That's dope. Yeah. And so what um, we can kind of get into, I guess the processes processes of publishing like what does that look like so um i published a book a couple years back uh got a couple other ideas that i want to and am going to move forward with but for those who don't know anything about publishing like what would you kind of 
go and tell them their first steps should be, so to speak. I have an outline. Okay. I did not start off with an outline. Okay. So I was all over the place and the editor was like, what? <laughs> so <laughs> she had to like really yeah, so put it like together. I said, I'm not a publisher. So outline like just like what y'all mean when y'all say that? Like when, I know what an outline is. The story. But, okay. Story. Just so, so how the story kind of like. Putting it together. Okay. Yeah. How you want it put it to put together. Facts. So yeah. you came just kind of all I had Because every time I had... So trauma makes you black out stuff. And mm. I blacked out everything. So I had to remember it all over again. Mm-hmm. And when I remember it, I would just jot it down. So my story was not making sense. I had Facts. to try to put it together. And then she had to really put it together. <laughs> yeah. I, so I actually published for a woman... And her story was like, <laughs> and it, it's crazy that you just said that. Cause I guess I didn't, as I was editing, I didn't think about it like that. And she was an older woman at that. So when we oh. go to our meetings, it was kind of hard for me to like decipher some things, but you just saying that makes so much sense because as I like read through the page, I'm looking at this, like, damn, this lady that been through some <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> but it didn't seem to make sense in regards to like, uh, I guess, ultimately the story being told. Mm-hmm. So to go and sit down with her and kind of go through her journey with her, I think for a lot of times authors, storytellers in general, because again, like Boogie said at the beginning, like understanding that spoken word comes in all forms, mm-hmm. all facets. And so just being able to share your story with somebody and it makes that impact and y'all are able to kind of connect and, you know, vibe on a certain level and frequency. I think that that's super important to expression and communication. And so where do you think that urge for you to want to do any of this came from, you know, because... Again, this is being an author is truly a (laughs) self starter job. Like nobody can make you got to wake up and put the uh, I tell any and everybody like and I love my boy Boogie to Death. But I wrote uh, the name of my book is My Father's Son. And I wrote My Father's Son when I was staying with him out in Decatur. That was a tough time for me. It was great for us to vibe and, you know what I'm saying, do our brotherly thing. But as far as on some personal, like, shit that I was going through and just how I saw my life, so to speak, it was like, yo, you got to spill on these pages, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So what, again, kind of triggered that self-starter for you to how how long? It's a two-part question, I guess. How long did it take when you did finally get your outline together? Mm-hmm. How long did it take you from that point to actually start filling in the outline? About a year. Okay. Yeah. And then after that, did you just start writing and... I just took off. I went through one editor and she messed up my book completely. Oh, man. And um, I got a review on Amazon and this lady, she went line by line on what was incorrect. And I snatched the book instantly and mm. had it re-edited. <laughs> That was another eight hundred dollars. She bought the book though. The lady that was correct. Yeah. <laughs> but that's tough. She went line by line on what was incorrect, and I was like, "Oh my god!" And I just snatched it and had it re-edited and put it back. So it's a lot of. You should have had that lady edit the book. Okay, that. But I, that, I appreciate you getting it. But shit, you wait. Where you at? You should have right. You were supposed to get her information. All she right. was supposed to do the book for you. Well, she might do my next book. Man, <laughs> that's that's tough. Yeah. Facts, facts. So, in in your writing, like, how do you, um, I guess, what techniques, like, in writing a story, is different levels to it. Is different parts that you got to really check into. Like, how did you start with? Do you start with like characters? Did you start? I did with, start with characters. Okay. I changed the names like eight times. Okay. Um, and then I just started, once I finished with the characters, I started with what I remember and filling it in for those characters. Okay. And then I had to switch a lot of stuff around because I didn't want to hurt certain people. So it was a lot. 
Okay, right. so you um you have any books up and coming at any point? Like um, I do. It talks about um when you're in the foster care system or when you're homeless, you kind of have um abandonment issues okay. and issues with um relationships. Sure. So I'm basically going through all of my relationships and how it's how hard it is to be um, a successful independent woman and act like you don't need a man. For sure. Mm-hmm. So what's um. What's writer mode like for you? Like what when you it's how do you lock in? Like when you like it's when you hard for me yeah right like now. when you like like I say I'm a poet so I ain't got to write as much as you have to write. I, I could if I wanted to, meaning uh, but like a book. Like how do it's you yeah. do you do you shut the world out? Do you go in a room, lock the door, tell the kids don't bother been. me? Don't like what is what is lock in mode when it's a, a book up and coming and you writing a new I've book? I've been like, shutting myself out, and plus I'm also writing my screenplay, so mm, okay. I, I am really in my room. I don't screenplay? even play. Yeah, I okay. have a play. Is next. it drama? Is it funny? Is it? Um, it's based off the book, but it's just. Uh, a funny drama. Okay, yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, where, where, where we gonna where, where we gonna be able to see this play? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually searching for theaters right now because it's not small. Um, I have a casting call next month, so um, I it's... could be in the in the play. Okay, I could be I'd probably like the lead dude. <laughs> talking about, I don't know. She <laughs> said I look like yeah. Buddy. Wait, yeah, she I'm said like, I look yeah. like he Buddy. Be he be Brandon. <laughs> you feel me? This she is already Brandon. said I, I look like Brandon's like minion. <laughs> um, Brand my or, boy. Or Big Robin number two. <laughs> like <laughs> me. Yeah. So just just keep me in mind. Yeah. yeah. So lock in mode is like that's what I was thinking. I was like he could be Brandon. <laughs> hey, let me know. <laughs> get my acting chops. Oh my god, that's gonna give me too. For sure. That's what's up. That's what's up. And it's gonna be based off the book. Yeah. So this is, this one's going to be based off the book I'm going to put out. It, my next book should come out around the same time, and then I'm going to do another stage play. You will kill them with the kids' stage play. Oh, we working on that, too. Horse uniforms and some, <laughs> horse, <laughs> horse, <laughs> some horse costumes. You know what I'm saying? Working will, on that, too. You will kill them with the, the, the I actually shit. have a meeting after you guys with the production company, so it's everything is moving so fast. Oh, yeah, you busy. Yeah. Right. That's why them niggas in your inbox. <laughs> and I ain't found one. Oh, man. <laughs> So about was 50 <laughs> niggas telling you they problems and it is <laughs> but that's why cuz they problematic 50 niggas with problems yeah, like for sure. that's, that's, that's why the 51st nigga ain't going to have no problem he's going to like I read the book and I, I like it and uh, you know right. even though he probably read it but he I told you niggas be finessing he going to finesse <laughs> he say he read the the, the last page of the yeah, first page he read about the Arthur <laughs> <laughs> single right he read about the Arthur you said single. That's what. That's what I, I saw one in the back of the books, and I saw that. And I was like, oh. oh, I got in trouble for that when I was dating the guy. He was like, why does it say single, happy mother of four? I'm like, I'm not married, so technically I hey, am single, well, and I, I'm taking I, care of these kids I, on my own, damn near for the most part. I'm single. <laughs> Quick plug, Battle of the Sexes. I said that in our first promo, single till you married. That's you what feel I think. Me? That's that's really what I it is. Why like, are we acting like we're married and we're not? So married. single till you married. Let's not get off subject, but we're going to get off real quick, <laughs> real, real quick, real, real quick, real fast. Single to you, Mary. You dating a guy and you like him. And, you, and y'all say y'all, y'all, I, t- together sounds crazy because like now y'all got me thinking single till Mary. <laughs> He's but, a power. Hey, yeah. But, uh, but um, so if you consider yourself someone's girlfriend like are you still single until married like i like how does that work like obviously he felt some type of way because obviously he thought y'all was like an item or like together we are together but we're not engaged i didn't have a ring and then i'm I'm, what am i advertising this is my brand so Mm. why should i include him in my brand and i worked hard for this i've been working Mm. for this for 10 years she'll get the money and leave yeah i'm gonna ask this was he one of the niggas who said he didn't believe in your dreams no facts he believes in it um he says he does they they all say they do but i don't know has he read the book that's what i feel that's how i feel when i date like she's established now has he read the book instantly they say we could build they all say they read the book. (laughs) (laughs) wait wait you so you you let you let wait tell me you let niggas tell you they read the book and don't hit them with a random book question (laughs) about what was book report you don't ask these niggas for book reports i need to (laughs) yeah you can't be with no nigga that say they support you and they read your book yeah that's a fact nigga need a book report next time i'm gonna ask them what page tell me this page what's your favorite part (laughs) <laughs> easy 
<laughs> no, for him to tell you a page is crazy because even though I'm reading your book, I'm not gonna remember what page I saw what on. But well, ask me, you gotta ask something from the book, like like well, what happened to the bird in chapter two? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like what happened to the bird in chapter two? And if he can't tell you what happened to Mama's bird. <laughs> They <laughs> he's cooked. They's cooked. The nigga's lying. He didn't read the book. He didn't read the book. Yeah, you can't be letting niggas be with you and not read the book and say they supporters. Right now, I'm not even concentrating on the man. So that's for sure, fine. for sure, get so them books off the ground. Speak, yeah. speak, speaking of that, so my question, next question being, how do you like? I know Bro just asked about like what does writer's mode look like for you, and you say you kind of shut out all that different type of stuff, but what does your environment have to be like in order for you to write? Does it have to be quiet? You got to have candles, do it like, what does that look like when you go into um, setting that scene up? Quiet. And I put a fireplace in my room. Just, just make it serene, serene and quiet. Like one of those, one of those uh, (laughs) generic fire, fireplaces. Okay. No, I didn't build a, (laughs) (laughs) I said, I said, do you have the wood, wood in your room? That is crazy. No, it's electric. Okay. But it does get a little hot. Yeah. It heats up. That's yeah. what's up. You like candles, maybe? Yeah. Drink a little wine. I don't drink. I don't drink. That's probably why I'm not taking a drink now, because I feel like it knocks my focus off. Mm. Okay. Now, if I wasn't focusing, I probably would have took a drink. But then I got to wake up in the morning and I'm dragging. I don't want to drag. I have so much going on right now. I just want to keep going. One cup of alcohol makes you drag in the morning? Yeah, it will. That means you don't drink often at I all. I don't. That's what's up. That's what's up. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Are you really? <laughs> hey, I believe him. I believe him. I am. I'm proud of you. Um, More for me. <laughs> how how do you go about uh, like tackling it, writing these? So a lot of these books, I'm sure, uh, take you to different spaces where you got to like process maybe trauma or at times where you weren't necessarily feeling at your best, all that different type of stuff. How do you manage to work through that stuff and still get the message across? Like still kind of And still deal with your regular life. Yeah. Kids, relationship, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? Work, you know what I'm saying? Or do you... Do you just strictly do books or do you actually have a No, I actually work. Okay, cool. Okay, so how do you stir all that together and make that recipe work? I go, I run, Mm. I meditate. um, I do anything. I I do a lot of stuff by myself because I feel like when Mm. you start telling people what's going on with you, they have so much stuff going on in their Mm -hmm. life, they don't want to hear it. Um, and then if they do, if they do listen, then they're going to pile on what they're going through next and you have to deal with that. So I just have to find ways that I have to, I could deal with me by myself. Mm. So solitude. Yeah. Like, so does that, what does, uh, uh, tie the horses into that? Where does these two horses oh, come from? Um, <laughs> I haven't rolled them all summer, but okay. I used to go and ride them a lot. Um, one I just bought, he is in Kentucky okay. and, um, the other one He's probably not technically mine. So the first fast foster family that I was with, um, I went there and I was like maybe 12 and I like tore up his whole house. I broke the mirrors because I didn't want to be there. Facts. And he was looking at me like, OK, go to this barn and brush this horse until you're not angry anymore. And that's how it became like my therapy. The oh, so they're older dope. now and they didn't have a horse. So I sent him to them as a gift. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, that's super dope. What's like, your horse's name? Um, chasing spirit. Facts. Spirit chasing. <laughs> there was a movie family. named Spirit too, wasn't it? With a horse. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Cartoon animated. Yeah, yeah. I think it was a Disney movie. Yeah. yeah oh, spirit. really? Yeah. yeah. I didn't think of that. Yeah. Facts. That's um, a horse name, obviously. <laughs> it's <all> about bad. <laughs> have you ever rolled a horse? No. Okay. I have. It's dope. Yeah, it is. Um, you, should, you should try it. Yeah. I might be lying. Maybe like at a uh what have I ever been? I don't think I have. I'm not going to lie. I, I, really it, it, I ain't going to stunt. You feel different up there. Yeah. You feel like, like yeah, you know what I'm saying? You feel like, I hey. saw Martin on Thin Line Between Love and Hate. <laughs> yeah, it's he not, didn't look like he enjoyed that. He, shit. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's because he probably he had bad energy too. And one thing that I appreciate you about- You say you got to become one with the horse? Uh, yeah. But, but and before the horse, with yourself. You got to be exactly. cool. You got to be. And so I was going to- uh, comment on that idea of 
solitude and your creativity. I like the idea that, like you said, you kind of go into a space where it's not that, and of course, correct me if I'm wrong, it's not that you may not share in a space of uh, not being sure or not being certain in your idea more so than like not letting external things contaminate mm-hmm. it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Not allowing just any and everybody to have access to mm-hmm. what it is that you're doing. Because yeah. I think that a lot of times as creatives, we can get mixed up in spaces where doubt easily seeps oh, in, yeah. like especially in a space where something like a project where, like you saying, you're putting so much of yourself into it and you've been working or, or the idea has been there for 10 years, 10 plus years, but because you maybe told everybody or it was like they kind of fan the fire out, mm-hmm. so to speak. <laughs> and so you find yourself in a position to where it's like, okay, bet. How can I operate effectively where other people don't see the vision? Yeah. So how did you overcome that? How did you just say, all right, bet. I set the standard here. I'm seeing what it is. What allowed you to finally separate from others in that spe- Ooh. Just If you talk to like the older generation and oh, yeah, oh, if sure. you just be like, um, somebody bash my head in just, just, <laughs> just for general conversation. Girl, that ain't nothing. Like they, they, they push a lot of stuff under the rug. They act like a lot of trauma that you've been through is nothing. Um, a lot of things that you're about to do is nothing because they working 80 hours a week. So nice. they, and they would make you feel like you cur- that you overreacting that you're being a drama queen. So I really had to put, just be like, I'm just going to keep, keep this to myself and do this for myself and keep it moving. And then right. now that it's out, now everybody's like, you know, your biggest cheerleader. You know we the older folks. You know the older folks were strong. Yeah, <laughs> they was picking cotton and they, 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 they you know what I'm saying? They, the shit, the shit we be going through, they be like, eh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. you soft. You got your heart broke. <laughs> I got whipped. <laughs> My granddaddy got whipped. <laughs> You can't right. tell them old people you going through no, no shit. They ain't get to tell you what shit to go through. And don't tell them about therapy. You don't need therapy. Right. <laughs> you need this God. Shit, right? <laughs> Immediately need Jesus. God. You feel me? <laughs> Jesus. And so with that being said, as I told you earlier, we, we usually wrap up with a segment uh, recently recently uh, named Do Your Thing. Do Your Thing. And so in this case, you bought your books. So we'll ask that you read the back cover to give people, you know, an idea. I was going to read the to... children's book that you say be gassing the men up. <laughs> <laughs> which, whichever one you feel, whichever one. Oh, the, the, the children's book yeah. you put single on? <laughs> oh, you put it in the kids' heads. <laughs> Them daddies reading the back of the book like, who the hell is this lady? Oh, single mom. Okay, you uh, didn't hear. Yeah. Why you ain't put it on no grown folk book? I did. Oh, Actually, okay. it does say it at the bottom that it I'm a happy be. single mother of four. Oh, okay. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's about mm. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, on that note. Uh, so the back of the book says, every day I'm restoring and rebuilding. Regardless of what others say, I put in the effort and I'm learning. My spirit is blazing with fire. Regardless of how often life attempts to knock me down, no matter what people in the community say about me, the evidence is on the rise and is unfalsifiable. So cry a little bit. Sorry, dry your tears, prepare to confront your worries in exchange for the rush that comes with opening a door and adventuring outside your comfort zone will show a more precise picture of accomplishment than any drone video could. Today is the best possible. I'm sorry. Today is the best time possible to take daily small steps. Work diligently to achieve your goals. You may you may you might sway on a rope between two trees, but you'll understand where you'll fit in. Mm. All you do, all you must do is be brave and take the chance. Accept the suffering and errors and do whatever it takes to follow your aspirations. I'm still trying to find myself, but I am proud of the person that I have become. Mm. Hey, I like that. On me. That's and the deep. thing was deep. That was deep. <laughs> and on that note, once again, per usual, before we get out of here, can you please tell the people once more where they can find you? <laughs> Where they can find the book. 
You can find the book on Amazon. Um, my IG is monqua33, M-O-N-Q-U-A-33. My TikTok is M-O-N-Q-U-A-33. Um, Camille and Juliet's Healing Relationship is on Amazon as, as well. well. Okay. And my Facebook is Monique Foltz. <clears throat> and per usual, we're getting out of here. It's your host. Boogie Ogun, mm -hmm. aka him, mm -hmm. him a thee, him for knee, mm. him the G, him who doesn't hide, him who seeks, him with the shortest arms, him still with the longest reach, and of course, my boy. Precious, with the perspective, per usual. And on that note, we out. We're out.